most public speaking, which uh, is the whole day of each year, I feel that for eight years, that uh, someone uh, has, should say something. And I bullied and coerced all the other staff to do a certain thing on this. So I start to say, no one will take this job. So when I was looking at um, our first thing is that we feel how are we going to manage without them? And we have been trying to get others to train up and to take their place. And we pushed guitars and we started looking into their hands. But when I was thinking, what would I say? But I hadn't said 105 times before. I was reminded that there are two, sub two comments about this group. That in the group there is, um, I suppose it was typical of the variety, I suppose, that uh, one of them from Mrs. Pendles. I know which one, and I think the person knows which it is, but let you guess. And uh, you just thought he would be down with the town, but thought this day would never come. So <laughs> it's here, anyway. And it just shows that I suppose we don't change enough that because it was an influence for one of them. And Mrs. Brentford was doing the sounds with them. And for the teachers amongst us, we know that that are. Is it hard to draw the funny sounds? It's a long time since I was an influence. But then was doing the first five, and it was A O U I, which had come to E. And one of our lovely five asked her to put up his hand and asked, Mrs. Prendiva, are there many more? I <laughs> did <laughs> brought the same humor with it all the years up along. Uh, even down to today, it was very funny this morning on it. And, uh, the other one then was that one of the dads described uh, Colin that is very uh, lonesome, I suppose she's probably one of the most lonesome ones even, but her dad reminded me during the week that she was what he called a reluctant starter. Oh, we really? have reluctant starters in reading, but she was never a bad reader. She just said other things that it was a reluctant statue. But anyway, I was just taking the poem, moving on, and it was the end of the poem. I said, um, I don't know who wrote it, but I told my father was saying earlier on, but the first verse was sort of appropriate for us. No more roll calls. No more gazing out the window. Your time is done. It's time to move on. No more lining up in the yard, waiting for Mar Martina to get the key and open the door. <laughs> No more lunch times, no more of the familiar rows and complaints. It's time to move on. You came to us here in juniors and we fed you with lots of good nourishing information and good learning, I hope. Here you were guarded and protected. You have grown and changed. <coughs> As we watch you emerge from the cocoon that is primary school, we look at you in awe and admire the wonderful young people you've become. You are a unique and talented little group with remarkable gifts and talents. You have within each one of you everything that it takes to succeed. Moving on brings changes, and change isn't always easy. It won't always make sense right away either. There will be times that the tasks in front of you will seem so daunting that you'll think you won't be able to get through them at all. You'll have your ups and downs like all of us. You don't always know exactly where you'll be headed. But the five of you have more than what it takes within you to take on any challenge that life will present you with. Over the course of time, the answers will come. The, the, Decisions you've made will prove to have been the right ones, but the hand the head will seem easier. Stay positive. Aim high. Be proud of all you've done. But look ahead to your next goal. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live life to the full. Walk to the edge. Play. Let laugh. Choose with no regret. Continue to learn. Believe in happy endings. 
because you are the author of your own story. I hope the next chapter will be a wonderful one for you. And if you ever need someone to lean on, be sure of me.